Hey everyone, this is Bremster, and I'm coming to you with the next problem in my Sudoku problem series. This one was submitted by Piotr V, and I was very happy to receive it, except now I'm looking at it trying to figure out, I really have no idea how I'm going to rate the difficulty of these, because this one's going to be a little bit more tricky for a lot of you. So this is an XV ratio problem, um, and I'm really, I really like this one. Um, so... Uh, what I'm going to do is, the way this puzzle problem works is, of course, normal Sudoku rules apply. Cells separated by an X must sum to 10. Cells separated by a V must sum to 5. And cells separated by a black dot um, must have a ratio of 1 to 2, or one must be double the other. So what I'm going to say is um, you should pause the video and um, give this one a try. I'll come back in a few seconds and try and explain how this one works. Okay, so this one, um, I, I really understood this one quite well, but how to explain it's going to be a little tricky. So the trick to this one, um, I think, is fairly clearly row five. Um, and the way I found I'm broke into this one was by looking at um, the way uh, where low digits need to go. So on a V, you must put two low digits, and I'm going to mark those in blue. Um, and on an X, you must put one low digit. Uh, and by low digits, I mean one to four. So you can only make this up with one, four, or two, three. On an X, you must use one of a low digit. So it's either going to be one, nine, two, eight, three, seven, or four, six. So there must be one low digit on an X. And on a black dot, there is no combination of a black dot where you're making a digit double another where you do not use at least one low digit. So because I've already used three of the four low digits, this has to be a low and a high as well as this being a low and a high. Now, I don't know the order of them. So because I have to put a high digit, the only high digits available for a black dot are six and eight because um, seven and nine uh, don't have a, a ratio. So six and eight, which means the other one is going to be three and four. This also means this is six and eight. But now I've got to try and figure out how this is going to work. So the way to think about this is by making virtual pairs. And this can be a little bit tricky. So if I think about the perspective of these digits, um, what I know is I cannot place another six or eight because I must put a six or an eight somewhere in one of these two cells and I must put a six and an eight here. So I cannot put a six or an eight anywhere else in this row. So in this in particular, I cannot put a six or an eight. So this cannot be um, four, six. It could be three, seven. It can't be two, eight. It could be one, nine. But I also need to think about this from the perspective of um, these. Um, I think it's those. This one was a little tricky. Um, from these. And I must put a 3 or a 4 on here. And I must put a 3 or a 4 on here. Because this is either going to be 2, 3 or 1, 4. And this is either going to be 3, 6 or 4, 8. So if I put a 3 on here... I must put a four on here. If I put a four on one of these two, I must put a three on here. So I can never make this three, seven, because if I put a three in here, this becomes four, eight, and this becomes four, one, and the whole thing is broken. So this must be one, nine, which takes one, four out of there. This becomes two, three, which takes three, six out of there. This becomes four, eight. This becomes the six, this becomes the three, and that is the solution to the problem. But you've got to chase those virtual pairs backwards and forwards along row five, having figured out that you've got a limited number of low digits in row five. This is a real step up in difficulty for some of these problems with only a few clues. And I really like the way this series is developing. And thank you, Piotr V, for sending this one through. I really do appreciate this. And when I first saw this one, I, I laughed out loud. I really loved this problem. So thank you, everyone who's submitting problems, um, particularly those who are submitting them via my email submission form, because that way I'm not losing them. People who've just messaged me a, a puzzle on Discord and said, here's a really cool problem. Uh, there's a really good chance I'm never going to see those again because I get hundreds of Discord messages a day and they'll just get lost in the noise. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone who's submitting. Um, I hope everyone is enjoying the series and as always, good luck with your solving.